Dr. Scott Kilberg, the Video Foot Doc, here with another video for you on all things foot and ankle. Today I'm going to talk about why corns form in between toes. A corn is also known as a hyperkeratosis. It's basically the same type of tissue as what's found on a callus when you have a hard spot underneath the bottom of the foot. A corn or callus or a hyperkeratosis is essentially a reaction in the skin to pressure, either from pressure uh, on the underside of the skin due to a shoe or the ground, or to pressure from within the skin, primarily due to bone prominence just directly underneath the skin. When these two pressures come together, the callus uh, will, or corn will form in the skin, which is essentially a thickening of the outer layer of the skin in response to this pressure. It's sort of like a sheet of armor that the skin creates on itself to basically pad and protect uh, the pressurized area. Unfortunately, as that sort of sheet of armor becomes thicker and thicker with uh, continued pressure, pain can also develop as a result of the hardness of that uh, callus or corn or hyperkeratosis uh, causing discomfort to the uh, healthy skin that's found below that, as well as to skin the, to uh, the side of that area as well. The reason why a corn forms in between the toes is due to several different factors which are generally all related. The vast majority of time a corn will form in between the toe because of a slight contraction or change in the actual position of the toe in which the toe instead of being straight becomes curved like this or crooked. Uh, we call that a hammer toe or there's a couple other uh, definitions based on which uh, of the joints in the toes are, are contracted and in what direction. Uh, but hammer toe is the most common, uh, uh, common cause with this and most commonly seen. Um, the hammer toes can form as a wide, uh, for a wide variety of different reasons. It most uh, often is due to one, simply one's foot structure. And uh, when one has a flatter foot or usually a higher arch foot uh, as well, uh, there can be a, a slight gradual change in the position of the toe over time as certain muscles have to adapt to functioning uh, within that, uh, within that, time, or that uh, framework of having either a flatter arch or a higher arch. And as time ensues, the contractions of those toes can become greater, and uh, eventually the toe becomes uh, so contracted that you actually physically can see that change in the shape of the toe. Unfortunately, what happens is as that toe contracts, uh, there are new areas uh, of the toe that will uh, have further pressure uh, than uh, would, would be present if the toe wasn't in that contracted position. So what essentially happens is if you have two toes that are right next to each other that are contracted, the spaces in between those two toes will often rub together because the prominent bone in between the greatest area of the contraction or where the, the toe is sort of at its highest uh, arc in, the, in its crookedness will often rub together inside the shoe and that rubbing motion between uh, the two toes compressing together and then the bone underneath the skin compressing into each surface of the skin will create uh, a corn or a hardening of that skin on either one toe uh, or the other or can also include both toes at the exact same spot where they meet. And that's essentially where um, these, uh, these corns come from. Now sometimes the corn can actually be present not simply in the middle of the toe space in between them, but sort of in the web space, the areas in between the toes. We often see this in between the fourth and the fifth toes. And the reason why uh, this uh, takes place uh, is because as the toe is more contracted upward, uh, the, the bone is just slightly set back a little bit more, especially on the fifth toe. And so the area where the bone actually rubs and contracts with itself on the other side is going to be slightly further back uh, and it will be closer to the uh, actual web space where the toe sits uh, rather than further on out in the toe. Uh, that one's a particular tough one to manage because it often becomes uh, moist and so you have sort of a combination of a hard central callus with a very soft uh, sort of uh, uh, wet, wet or mushy kind of callus in the space surrounding that and sometimes can get fairly deep and even form wounds uh, underneath uh, that callus surface or that corn surface rather. Uh, wounds can form underneath any corn or callus uh, and sometimes do form uh, uh, underneath uh, corns in between the toes uh, but this uh, is, not, uh, is not as common as uh, what is seen sometimes underneath uh, the ball of the foot, uh, for instance, where there often can be very thick calluses that in some individuals like those who are diabetic or have poor sensation can develop uh, sores or wounds underneath that area. Uh, in order to kind of treat and control uh, these painful corns in between the toes, there are several different things that can be done. Certainly a program of maintenance uh, that one can perform upon themselves is important to keep the, the corn tissue from continuously building up. And that just simply involves taking an emery board or a small pumice stone 
and sort of rubbing or gently grinding down uh, that uh, heavy uh, skin surface while the skin is still moist in order to uh, reduce the height of that, uh, of that corn. Uh, another technique that can be used that's uh, uh, somewhat effective is to simply take a spacer pad. And these are basically little pads that fit in between the toes that help to separate the toes and keep them from rubbing together and creating these corns. Uh, they can be made of a variety of different materials, including uh, foam um, and, uh, and uh, silicone uh, type gel material, which is usually the most resilient and can actually, actually be washed and reused multiple times. Uh, and they're available at a wide variety of different retail stores and online as well. Uh, those are often very effective in controlling the, the pressure between the toes uh, and can be helpful in controlling the, the pain if that corn happens to become painful. Uh, ultimately, some of these need to have surgery uh, in order to correct the actual hammer toe deformity itself, which is creating the underlying bony pressure and allowing for the corn to form in the first place, which essentially is a relatively simple procedure, uh, doesn't take long to recover from, and generally has very good success. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please look for more video on all things foot and ankle on this site as well as others, or you check out my website at www.inpediatrygroup.com. Thank you.